Chapter 6, Where is Home? Speaking of E.T. souls on Earth, let me tell you another story. Recently, I was asked a second interesting question. Where, for you, is home? they asked. Instead of my usual answer, which seems mature enough and runs something like this, I'm not sure where I'm from in physical terms, and it's not such a big deal, another thought came into my mind. This answer seemed to drive deeper to the essence of the question and the heart of the answer, capturing the feeling of home far better and offering a much different perspective on the whole issue, which is often quite important for wanderers on their path of discovery. After really absorbing the thought that came to me, I felt a kind of breakthrough, an epiphany or revelation, which led me to write this chapter. Instead of giving my standard answer, I listened to the deeper roots of mind and answered, my real home is a state of unbound awareness in tremendous unity. This is the place from which I'm estranged during my life on earth. My homesickness is a pain of having lost this beautiful open state of being. After I said that, a mild image and a soft feeling came over me, like a tiny window opening to a long-forgotten landscape of rare beauty. It wasn't dramatic, not intense, not a peak experience. Perhaps I've become too buried in human life. But there was a familiar, sweet scent like roses in midsummer bloom, and it struck like a bell that my real home was truly a state of consciousness, not some place nor constellation in the sky. Today, when I look within to sense the process that brought this insight, all becomes dark. It's not the darkness of sorrow, though, but rather the darkness of space, in which invisible energy lines crisscross in great fullness, yet without eyes to see, we can't normally perceive this vitality. And so, I can only return to my original state of awareness with heightened, piercing vision, a vision that knows I'm not seeking a place, but rather a state of being, always available. True self is the true home. Dwelling in boundless mind is the real homecoming. The entire spiritual path leads to the original home. This understanding is not the ET-related one at all, and it's really the goal of all mystic traditions. When a wanderer's seeking goes far enough, it strikes the center of what has been called the infinite way, the timeless path of union with all that is. Where is home? It's the clear reality of the individual mind I call my own, fully merged with countless other beings, the most intimate family I know. This is my true group. Where is home? It's the unbroken memory and ever-present vivid experience of all past lives, countless rich experiences on myriad worlds, learning and joy and sorrow, passing from ignorance to enlightenment. This is myself. Where is home? It's the fluid embrace and a grandeur of being, a transcendent passion of union with the one creator whose body is the entire universe. This is my world. True home, for all of us, is realizing endless awareness, endless meaning, and endless value in each iota of matter, thought, circumstance. This is Godhead. And yet, if we choose to return to modes of ordinary perception, we could say, I am Zoron from the Pleiades. But doesn't this sound silly? Yes, indeed, Mr. or Mrs. E.T. Soul, Mr. or Mrs. Walk-In, Wanderer, or Star Person. This may be so, but who were you before you were Zoron from the Pleiades? Who is the initiator who gave the spark of consciousness which formed your spirit? Who is the inner master and voice from which you, so-called E.T. Visitor, draw the breath of life itself? Full awareness of the bright light at the core of our being is the real home, even while our body sits on earth, in the Pleiades, or anyone else. Now, I certainly don't mean to be disrespectful. I, of all people, have great regard for the enormous sacrifice of E.T. Watkins and wanderers living on earth, serving humanity towards its own New Age home, which is, nevertheless, yet another time-space illusion if you forget eternity, no matter how lovely fourth density is. As you know, I based my doctoral research on the lives of those who say I am from such and such a planet, and I too consider myself an E.T. wanderer. Nevertheless, who are we really, and where are we really from? In the final analysis, spiritual maturity is measured by the quality of our awareness, sensitivity, love, and wisdom, certainly not by the religion we follow, the dogmas we hold, the beings we channel, 
nor the quantity of books we've read. Genuine illumination of the real, the emergence of self, entry into clear mind luminosity is a revelation of burning veils, a shattering of old forms of thought and countless misidentifications with the unreal. What is real is what is eternal, which is, in fact, the creator of heaven and earth and all things in between, the creator of all time-space realms, densities, and dimensions, as well as all the beings within them. Essentially, we ourselves are not different or separate from this eternal creator. We are the infinite creator. And if we identify ourselves with anything less, it's simply another illusion, which must be shattered on the final path going home. For more on these matters, see section 2, chapter 21, Self and God.